Welcome everybody back to another NWA Spotlight. It's a weekend, which is unusual for us to be doing NWA a weekend, but it's always good. I'm joined as always by my Scottish compadre, the NWA queen, Miss Fiona Lockwood, just in from a chaotic show, I believe. Just in from a wild weekend of shows, absolutely. How are you though? Is Scotland snowing? Are we seeing any No, it was beautiful going? today. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. And I was stuck inside a community hall all day, so I never saw any of it. No, well, it's been free. It's actually, I thought it was winter this morning over here. I took my son football or soccer for our, our guest purpose. And um, yeah, it was freezing. I was standing there shriveling up like a prune. Um, oh, to the day. But anyway, enough about me, enough about you. It's our favourite show, the Spotlight Edition on the NWA. And this time... We have one of the guests that we are looking forward to the most when we when we sent out some you know feelers out to some of the roster. We were always wanted to get one of the southern tickets. Is it one third or one six B of this? How do we want? I'm not sure. I think that's something that we have to ask our guests. We'll have to ask our guest, Mr. Alex Taylor from the Southern Six. How are you? <clears throat> I'm living the dream, baby. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. You guys broke out the big guns for this episode. We did. Absolutely, absolutely. So we might as well kick things off. Is it one third of the Southern Six or is it a sixth of the Southern Six we've got here today? Well, before I came onto this show, I uh, consulted some lawyers. And so there's a lot of things I don't need to talk about. So of I'm going I'm to plead, plead the fifth on all questions related <laughs> to the Southern Six. Okay. <laughs> this could be a quick interview. <laughs> uh, but let, let's just start with a better question, Alex. Obviously, the NWA. What is it that's in your mind that's so special about the NWA? You've been there a few, a few, good few seasons now. What is it for you that's so special about it? Oh, it's uh, if I had to put my finger on it. I think just the environment, you know, the feel of the whole show. It's got that. I don't want to say old school throwback, but because I don't think we're stuck in the past, but I think we're uh, we're something different. Yeah. No, definitely. So think for you that's watched it, I think ever since the lightning one, maybe before, I can't remember. Yeah, that. beginning of power, I've been there since. So what, what is it for you, Fee, that makes the NWA so special in your eyes? Um, I like so I've been to shows as well. I've I've been I've been out at tapings, I've been at some of the, the live bigger shows. Yeah. I like the I like the small kind of it's almost personal. It's almost feels like, particularly when you're in the studio, that it's for you, not anyone else round about you. But I like the old school vibe, particularly in the first couple of seasons, the old kind of TV vibe of it. It's moved a little bit away from that now with the newer seasons and the new setup and the new production and stuff. But um, I do like the kind of smaller, the smaller kind of setting. And I love the fact, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'll say it again and I'll say it again. I love the length of the episodes. I do not have three hours to sit down and watch a wrestling show a show that's 50 minutes, 60 minutes is perfect for me as a full-time worker. I'm on with three kids who spends all our weekends at wrestling shows herself. So um, mm -hmm. I love the fact that it's just an hour and it's three, sometimes four really, really good matches in that hour. It's full of action. It's constant. There's not a lot of filler, so to speak, in them. So that's what I like about it. Very, very true. Very, very true. Alex, from your point of view, we, we talk about the roster quite a bit. I'm going to make an analogy, and I've done this with Carl, uh, as you know, Fee. This is a different analogy. Though. We're talking about the roster in NWA, and it reminds me, and it goes back to the early sort of 90s of Raw. If you can remember when WWE was moving, or WWF at the time, was moving into the Attitude Era, and I'm talking about more about the characters in its diverseness. So you had, like, you had, like, the Stone Cold, you had the Rocks, you had the Triple H's, but then you had, like, Kane, mankind the oddities and vader and people like that in the nwa now i class i don't think there's any company out there that has a broader scale of what i would class as characters so you've got like the ec freeze you've got like your traditionalist tim storm ec freeze you know you've got that tag team you know you've got the factions like pretty empowered and, and the southern six but then you spin that and you've got like although we haven't seen them recently you've got like yarbo and ruffo you've got gags you've got alex M misery and, and james mitchell and then you spin that 180 again and you get another character like max the impaler i don't know if, if you agree alex but it feels like a really big diverse uh, characters on that roster oh yeah i would agree i would agree i mean you got guys like magic jake as well yeah um yeah, I mean, my opinion, I think there's a little bit too much fat in the locker room that needs to be cut out. But 
if it was me, if it was my, if it's up to me, the Southern Six would be on every episode. I mean, I think there's a, lot, a little too many people getting in the way of that. <laughs> Interesting. Fido, do you kind of agree with that analogy that, you know, in terms of diverseness, there is so many different types of characters in the NWA roster than perhaps any other roster currently in America? Yeah, you can go from kind of show to show and you can go from one extreme to the other on it. Um, and you'll maybe go two or three weeks without seeing the same people. Yes. Because there is so many characters, but obviously, as Alex says, the more Southern Six, the better. Well, in indeed. Indeed. Alex, I haven't, we'll see, how much are you looking forward to the Crockett Cup now? It's coming up. We, we know that there's, I think, some tapings coming up, or there have been some tapings where potentially uh, there's going to be some qualifying rounds. I think there's even a qualifier, maybe even a, 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 one of those uh, events at the weekend coming up. But are we going to see yourself and Kerry in, in these tag matches or you and Frillbilly or someone like that from the Southern Six? So, see, this is where it gets weird with these tapings we've done because I'm not 100% sure what I can talk about mm -hmm. and what I can't say, but yeah. I will say Crockett Cup, the Southern Six is leaving with that Crockett Cup. There we oh, go. We might, be leaving with, we might be leaving with some other gold as well. So, uh, drop that for you. Isn't that right? Am I right? Didn't... Is Phil Biddy going after EC3 now? This is where we are, right? Currently. Yeah. Yes. They, they should be having a match on power coming up soon. I don't know if it'll be next week or the week after. Really? And also, sure. me and Carrie will be whooping the hell out of uh, Mike Knox and Trevor Murdoch in a cage. So oh, I'm looking for forward to that one. Um, do you think that's going to be quite a challenge for you guys? Um, two big guys in a ring. I've seen Sorry. what you can do. I've seen what Kerry can do. Um, how much experience of cage matches have you had? Um, I grew up in the cage, so I don't. I don't need no more experience. I got it. I don't think I'll break a sweat in this match. <laughs> and Carrie, that boy's a dog. So <laughs> he, he certainly is. But in terms of cage matches, though, uh, Alec, what is the like the? How do you prepare to yourself to do it? Because obviously it's not just a standard, you know, squared circle. You now have this, you know, 16 foot, 15 foot high cage that's coming out. How do you prepare yourself both physically and mentally for one of those matches? Um, well, I I like to uh, prepare with uh, the special drink that comes in the can, 96 calories. It's called Miller Light. <laughs> I have a few of those the night before. Get my meditation on. That's about it. Ah, that uh, Miller Lights. I'll have to try that before. Drink of champions. <laughs> oh yeah, drink of champions. <laughs> We're going back to the Crockett Cup, though. There is a massive prestige about that in general. You know, with the NWA, there's there's all the Crockett Cup's always been this big, massive tournament. What would it actually mean to you personally if a you do you just say for argument's sake you're in it, and b that you win that with the lineage and the presidency that's come before you. Uh, I mean that's huge. That's uh, there's only a handful of winners. I think you to put our name in stone with those guys that means a lot. So, I think Southern Sick, etch it in stone, baby. It's it's coming. It'd be interesting to find out, Fiona. You've been there. You, you've loved this cup. What does it again? The prestige for you. What does it mean as a fan watching? the Crockett Cup, and you've been there live, so obviously... I've been there live. I love tag team wrestling. That's no secret. Um, I I just... I don't know what it is about tag team wrestling that I like. I mean, I like wrestling in general, but there's something really, really exciting about tag teams. And I think tag team wrestling for me and the Crockett Cup, um, it's... I'm trying to think of the right words. It's almost like an anything goes. People that you think are maybe going to do really well, maybe not so well. There's a lot of surprises in it. It's it's one of these kind of tournaments that keeps you on your toes and it could go either way. Um, I was really, really fortunate to see um, the Briscoes um, when I was out there. Um, so that was 2022. I was out and saw the Briscoes at the Crockett Cup. Um, really fortunate to see. I was I was really excited because I thought I was going to see um, Doug and uh, Nick team up, old school uh, British Invasion. Obviously, that all changed um, and we ended up seeing Doug and Harry Smith. But that was really, really cool to be there and see like someone from the UK in it. They bring folk in from all over. So I'm, I love the fact that it's not just an NWA tournament. They are bringing teams in from outside. 
I, I'd just like to say it wasn't very cool for me because I was expecting Nick Aldis and I had to get in the ring with that gorilla Harry Smith. So <laughs> yeah. I didn't enjoy it as much. He's a big lad. He is a yeah. big lad. He's so is Doug, lad. to be fair, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Doug's yeah, Doug's nice guy. yeah. Yeah. Doug's no slouch, but Harry's, uh, Harry's a bit of a beast. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I know him quite well. Um, Alex, you made a good, we've made a good point. Tag team wrestling in general is kind of like a, a dying art in other areas. It has its peaks and its troughs. I mean, when I was growing up as, as, as a boy, it was massive. You had LOD, Demolition, Powers of Pain, people like that. You know, Midnight and Rock and Roll Express was still, you know, doing it on the scene then. But it does have its peaks. Rough. Being a part of a tag team or even a faction, do you find that the NWA actually takes pride in its tag and the faction divisions that you guys have? I think so, for sure. I think there's a long history of great tag team wrestling in the NWA. And for us to keep, I mean, we have Harry in the group and his father, Ricky, one of, yeah. one of the great tag teams of all time. But, I mean, for me, I've always just teams growing up, teams that I watched later, I mean, because I wasn't there when it happened, but guys like the Hart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, uh, Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express, I've watched all those matches so many times. It's just, and I, I I agree. I love tag team wrestling, and I can't really put my finger on why, but it's just mm-hmm. for me. It's uh, I don't know. Everyone, you you want that that singles glory, that gold, but something about tag team wrestling is just it's different, special. Yeah, it certainly is. I, I love I love tag team. I like I like you know six man tag team. But let's talk a bit about you, uh, Alex. Growing up when you was you know growing up as a kid watching wrestling, who who was it that you was sort of drawn to growing up, and how did you end up uh, in the business? And tra- where did you go training, and how did you end up into the NWA? Um, see, I know everyone's always got that story of flipping the channels and finding wrestling, but for me, I, it was just always on at my house. My dad always had it on, so I don't. It's just something that was always there. Uh, I mean, uh, so as a little kid, I I remember vi- very just kind of watching WCW, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall were the coolest. But mm-hmm. as I got a little bit older, uh, Shawn Michaels was my guy always. Then guys like Eddie Guerrero, Benoit, there, yeah, and uh, actually Benoit after that whole tragedy. Through all that, that's how I found Dynamite Kid and started watching all of his old stuff. Yeah. That's – but, yeah. Um, and after high school, see, I, I played uh, football, American football, the real football. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fighting talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but um, I finished there, and I really wanted to play college football, but I turns out when you go to college, they expect you to go to class and make good grades. <laughs> So after that didn't work out, I moved back home and uh, got a job uh, installing granite, which was fun. Um, But then I found I was just searching for wrestling schools one day and a friend of mine said, hey, Seth Rollins just opened a school in Iowa. And I was like, cool, I'm going to do that. And didn't look into it at all. Just signed up online, sent them my money and ended up driving about 10 hours to uh, Davenport, Iowa a few months later. And that's how it all began. The rest is history, so to speak. Oh, yeah. And but I trained. That was a whole nother story. But I I moved back to Tennessee. I'm doing these terrible shit indies like we all do. (laughs) Uh, Afraid I'm going to be stuck there forever when uh, a man that's known now by the name of Danny Deals found me in a locker room and took me with him on the road and that that's what changed my life that's the only reason i'm in the nwa today is because of him him and crimson interesting did you um you say about seth Ryan school did you actually ever get a chance to to talk to seth or have a chat about anything with him or was he was he always traveling at the time of the wwe no he was there most of the time uh we would have class three i think three nights a week maybe four i'm not sure but he was there uh, usually three days out of the week, two or three days out of the week, unless they were overseas or something. Yeah, but he was all. He actually during our training class is when he won the world title for the first time. And I remember that pretty well because I was like, "Man, I'm glad I got in when I did because the rate of the school is going to go up a lot." And I yeah, have been able to I can get. imagine. 
That's really interesting, that Seth Rollins, the Seth Rollins score. I know he's a coffee connoisseur, a bit like me, but I didn't know about it. I knew he had a score, obviously. But when you've gone now to the NWA, Fiona, we, we've talked about this quite a lot. The production level, since obviously the CW, even before CW, the, the production level keeps increasing and getting better and better and better and better. How good is it now to be on that CW app? Now, and also because sooner, very soon, I think even as soon as this fall, there's going to be another wrestling company on there, I believe, and not necessarily by the name of NXT. Does it really put you in good stead that you're on there, you're, you're on there every week now, and it's just really heightened how big the NWA is getting? Yeah, uh, I think we can feel it in the locker room, the the momentum we're gaining. Um, but hey, uh, I don't know. Right As of right now, my checks haven't changed, so <laughs> hopefully they'll be going up soon. Indeed. Feet, go ahead, because I know you've got some questions, so just go right. I I do, but I want to come back to the, the 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 tag team thing. Obviously, the Southern Six, there's three main players. There's yourself, there's Katie, and there's uh, there's Thrill Billy. Um with tag team championships, um, or even with the Crockett Cup or the World Tag Championships, what's your thoughts on free burden them? Um, uh, well, that that's always an option. So I don't wanna lay out all my hands, all my cards right now for you, but we can see what happens. Uh I think those world tag team titles, it's only a matter of time until we get our hands on those. I think that would I think that's a fair a fair assumption. They are beautiful, beautiful looking belts. They are absolutely stunning belts. Um I can I can see them round your waists, absolutely. Oh yeah, and I don't know if as far as free burden them goes, I don't know if Thrillbilly's going to have time because I think EC3 is running from him right now, and it's only a matter of time before Thrilly catches up to him. He takes that ten pounds of gold. So, I am so looking forward to seeing that match. So looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. It's one of those ones I'm I'm very very look very much looking forward to. I'm a I'm a big EC3 fan though, unfortunately. But we, <laughs> uh, it's no. nothing personal against the brother. I kind of like him, but sorry, you got to stick with your boy. Yeah. We've only we've only just recently got access to CW to the CW yeah. and the current the current seasons of power. Um obviously it's not available overseas at the moment, which is really, really unfortunate. Um so we've had to go down a I bit the bullet after moaning about it for a long, long time. I eventually <laughs> got a VPN um and I am actually so impressed with how much the production levels have increased even from last season that I could watch on YouTube to now. Um it's just really, really good to see the, the 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 better camera angles, the better shots, the new kind of intros and things like that. So um the fact that we are actually going to be able to watch the match between Thrillbilly and EC3 excites me quite a lot. I'm not even going to pretend it doesn't. Yeah, definitely. And to go back to your, your uh, question earlier about being on the CW app, uh, I know everyone, I don't really buy into the internet crap too much all the chatter but i remember there's like a, a lot of people talking about it was a negative thing when they announced mm -hmm. but i mean the biggest wrestling company in the world just announced they're going to netflix right and not to compare the cw app to netflix but i think the whole world's leaving tv that streaming is the future so it's the way i look at it it's a lot a lot better than people are giving it credit for yeah. i think it's a smart move I do, because I, I agree with you, absolutely. I know, like, in my own house, I don't really watch regular TV, so to speak. I have my fire stick. I can flip through. I'll watch Netflix or go on Amazon or whatever. So, um, absolutely. I'm totally in agreement with you on that one. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the NFL season is the only time of year I watch regular TV. And that's, honestly, actually half those games I find through streaming apps. Sure. To play games, so. Yeah, definitely. So I don't think there's anything bad about it. It's just, uh, it was just uh, the frustration from the international fans where we couldn't see it until. Yeah, I can understand that. Which is, uh, you know, when you're doing a podcast weekly about power and we having to read the results instead of watching it was uh, a bit awkward for a few weeks or months. I can't remember how long it was for you since we, was it was eight it's weeks. Like two months, I think. Yeah, yeah. two months before before yeah. you bit a bullet. You you bit a bullet before me though, so I did. I did. I caved so, in. I gave up. Now. I couldn't. I'm I couldn't not see it any longer. I'm trying to get over there and wrestle for you guys. So I need people over there to see me. 
Absolutely, because that's it. It'll open up a whole new market for, for a lot of you guys. And NW isn't huge in the UK. And obviously, at the moment, because a lot mo most of the wrestling population, fan population over here can't access it, um, I find that actually quite sad because the product that you're putting out just now is top class and the production's great and the roster's unbelievable and every match that you're putting on is really, really high quality. And I find it quite sad that it's only going out to such a small market. So hopefully that'll improve soon because it will. It'd be great for you guys to get your names out there across the, the rest of the globe. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Definitely, because I think EC3 is not long come back from the UK because he, he defended yeah. the ten pounds of gold over here. I want to say one of the Page sisters is due to come, or maybe that was moved. Maybe I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, I can't remember. But it'd be good to have some of the NWA guys uh, over here for for a shows, uh, especially in the get UK. Billy to bring you over in the summer. The Smashing Pumpkins are coming to the UK this summer, and tell them you need to come too and do do well, like the Australian. The, the UK version of the Australian tour or something. I was really hoping that's what we were going to do, but I nothing's been said, so I assumed we would have heard about it by now. If we yeah, I would have thought so, because I think it's only like two months away or something. I think it's June he's coming yeah. over, so. Yeah, and my birthday's in June, so I was looking at the dates. I was like, it's a show. Oh, you could have had a birthday. birthday party in Scotland or England. Yeah. It would have been that fab. Been awesome. <laughs> my birthday's in June as well, so what, what day, Alex? 15th. Oh, five days before me. <laughs> I, although I'm I'm slightly older, I am celebrating a milestone birthday this year. But you know, you, hey, you don't me as you well. Don't, you don't ask a bald man his age over here. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is a lot. It, it, it's four zero. Um, but anyway, um, moving forward, looking further down the line, uh, NWA seventy six uh, was announced, and it was even announced that they're going to the old ECW arena, which is amazing. A great. It's a 2300, I think it is, the, the arena it's going to. When you're going into sort of places with that nostalgic feeling as well and, and the background and everything about that, does it make it even more special when you get there and, and you're going into these sort of just like arenas that have been nostalgic for over sort of 20, 30 years? Um, I've never wrestled there before. And I've always heard that place is a dump. <laughs> so I'll just say it, whatever. People of Philadelphia can get over it. Um, yeah, I heard it's a really trash place, so I'm not looking too forward to it. But I mean, if we're going to the Mid South Coliseum or something, I'd be excited. But okay, it is what it is. It the night ends with the six holding gold. So. Yeah, you, well, you may not get out of there now. You said. <laughs> 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 now, uh, most fans are, are crazy. <laughs> well, I have the biggest man who ever lived on my side, so I, I'll take my chances. Yeah. This is this is true. This is very true. Um, yeah, I think you'll be all right. Yeah, you, <laughs> you might just make it. Out. Make, we'll, see, we'll see how you do. Uh, Feet, look before we start wrapping up. I always say, go for that. You got the you always got the last question. This is your baby. This is your show for us. This is my show. Okay, so tag team back again because obviously you are in the Southern Six. Who is the one tag team, if any, because I'm trying to rack my brains, that you've not faced in the NWA that you want to get your hands on? Ooh. Um, well, BFT would be my first choice because right now they have the titles. They have the belts, absolutely. Um, outside of them, let me think for a second. Um. I have an answer that I don't know if they're a team yet on the current. I'm just going to skip, skip that one. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's do. cool. Tell us off there. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, them, uh, the Immortals. I mean, those are some big old boys too. So I think that'd be a hell of a, an opportunity for them to show what they got against the 7-6. But, yeah, because they, they just dropped in the, the episode that's just passed, they just yes. dropped the the national tag team championship or the US tag team championships and then obviously went for the, the world championships and were not successful. So, um, yeah, I think that would be a good one for you. I'd quite like to see that. They are big lads, both of them. The good thing is, yeah. is that if you did go for BFT, at least you have someone on the outside that can keep Aaron busy. <laughs> yeah, 
Ricky will Ricky will punch him right in the face. So I don't <laughs> you don't mess with Ricky Morton. No, you don't. Yeah, that Alan, you need to keep an eye on him. Yeah, you do, but you don't mess with Ricky Morton. Absolutely. Just to elaborate on Fee's question a bit more, if you could choose any tag team on outside of NWA, who would you like to face Ooh. given the opportunity? I mean, I think the the obvious answer is uh, FTR. I think they're <laughs> the best best in the world right now. What they do, definitely. Uh, Ooh, there's so many answers for this that I it's hard to just pick. Yeah, that's the first. That's the first one that comes to mind. Um. Um. A nostalgic like, one, then. What about a nostalgic past one? You mean guys that are still going, or or whatever, we, or just we, anybody we, that? Yeah. I mean, if we had a time machine, uh, uh -huh. the Bulldogs. That's always yeah. Okay. That's why. Uh, Part of the reason wrestling Harry was so cool, yeah, because yeah. I was such a was such a mark for the British Bulldogs. Um, but hey, um, the uh, the brothers up in Canada right now, um, working for Brett, uh, the Bulldogs. I forget Billington, yeah, man, Billington. they're calling themselves, but is it Bill the, Billington Bulldogs? Is it? Yeah, oh. Billington Bulldogs. I would I wouldn't mind getting there with them. That would be fun. Interesting. Okay. Very, very interesting. Feet, we're going to start wrapping up. Um, uh -huh. I, know you've, I know you've had two shows already, uh -huh. but give us what you're one of the most busiest women I know. So what what's going on? You're not going to believe this. I actually have two weeks off. <laughs> so the day job and two weekends off of shows and then it ramps up in May. Um, I've got a load of stuff coming up with PBW, BCW, W3L, MEE, so lots of shows going on, um, and also obviously Inside the Ropes, which I plug every single week. Um, we have a show coming up 1st, 2nd and 3rd of June with the legend that is Jake the Snake Roberts in Glasgow, Manchester and London. Tickets available from itrtix.com. Come along, meet Jake, get your photos, sit down and listen to the stories that are going to come out of his mouth because I can guarantee there will be some absolute belters. So yes. itrtix.com. But that's it. Two weeks off. Yes. <laughs> Lucky you. Uh, I can uh, definitely agree with Jake. I had him. We've had him on here before. He was he was great to have on. Uh, in terms of us, before we let Alex finish off with, with his uh, schedule, uh, we're going to be, this is, so bear in mind, the time of recording is the 20th of April on a Saturday. So the next day, tomorrow, Sunday, the 21st, uh, we're at Ignite Wrestling. Uh, our Heat in the Turnbuckle men's champion, will uh, Smashy Mike, will be going against uh, the brilliant James Ellis. And then in July, so we're, we're mushing it down. We do have a couple of guests I can announce on the show before that. But in July, tickets are on sale now. Go to Eventbrite at, at Ignite Wrestle Pro. But the Hitting the Turnbuckle sponsored show, the whole show is sponsored by us. It's Buckle Up 2. Fiona, you were there last year. To, and I believe you. someone was sat next to you that got a very hard chop, if I remember <laughs> rightly. Uh, Buckle Up 2. Yes, but Buckle Up 2 is now. It's probably with one of the, one of the most hardest choppers in the business in Luke Jacobs. He's going to be headlining uh, that show. So, you, you know, Alex, you won't know who Luke Jacobs is, but if you Google him, you, you'll, you'll okay. know uh, who he is. Uh, there'll be more and more matches to be announced as we go along. I can't announce any, uh, any further matches as it stands, other than the fact that the Turnbuckle title match will be from the winner of the triple threat match tomorrow night. So we will know who the men's turnbuckle championship match will be going on at buckle up until then. We do have Jonathan coachman coming on very soon as well. I believe that is in may and I can, that's all I can announce for now. So Alex, last thing for you, where can people find you on social medias and what is your diary like coming up? Um, you can find me on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter at uh, Alex T 902. Um, uh, make sure you go to NWA or National Wrestling Alliance dot com slash shop. Get the southern. We got a new Southern Six shirt coming out, but until yeah. that, until that one drops, the uh, the original is online exclusive. So all sizes are available. Go get that. Um, coming up next weekend, I believe the twenty six. I'd have to look at a calendar, but this is going off the top of my head. Uh, I'm in somewhere at Harriman, Tennessee. Me and Carrie were in a tournament for the Southeastern Tag Team titles. Is that the Harriman uh, Heat show? Sure. Yeah, that yeah. is correct. Uh, then I believe the following week after that, uh, May, oh, don't ask me dates, but I'll, we will be in Columbus, Ohio for a Juggalo Championship Wrestling. 
Oh, cool. The day after that, I got to drive back to Tennessee. Uh, that'll be May 4th for uh, Pro Wrestling Entertainment, where I'm defending my heavyweight title. Mm-hmm. EC3 is also coming to town that night. I don't think he's going to get in the ring with me because he's a coward. But, but, but let, I'll let him do his thing. Uh, we might cross paths in the locker room. After that, honestly, I, I don't know. I'm somewhere. Crockett Cup on the 18th. We know that much. Yeah. Yes, Crockett Cup on the 18th. Indeed. Well, Alex, thank you so much for your time, especially on a Saturday. It's really, as I said, it's really unusual for us to, to do a Saturday, but we're happy to accommodate any NWA roster or any day. Just let us know. But thank you so much for coming on and sharing some Southern Six and for bringing some Southern Six to this show. But I think it's only fitting to end it with if you're hot, you're hot. And if you're not, goodbye, everybody.